how's it going everybody? My name is Aaron J. Holt and I'm back at it again with another React video. First of all, happy Halloween you guys! As you can see, I am wearing my Halloween shirt for the spookiest day of the year. <laughs> if you're watching this at night, I hope you're having a fun and safe time trick-or-treating. What's your favorite Halloween candy? Let me know down in the comments below. My favorite is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. So since it's Halloween, I thought we should react to a Halloween video, you guys. So the video that we're going to be reacting to today will be Three True Disturbing Halloween Horror Stories, uploaded by Mr. Nightmare six years ago and has 3.5 million views as of this recording, you guys. Wow. So grab your trick-or-treat candy, turn down the lights, and get ready to have your pants scared off. So what do you say? Let's get started. Halloween Horror Stories. Story 1, Anonymous. Story 2, John Scotts. Story 3, Dean Trevor. Oh boy. Halloween 2016. My three friends and I, who for the purpose of this story will be named J, K, and L respectively, were trick-or-treating downtown. Downtown was always a mob scene on Halloween only because the houses were so close together, meaning more candy for the amount walked. 10 o'clock was always the time things really started to die down, and by 10.30, we were really the only kids still out trick-or-treating. Only like 1 in 10 houses actually opened their doors this late, so we called it quits with the trick-or-treating and decided to just screw around. It was a Saturday night after all. As we called it quits with the trick-or-treating, a lone person in a clown costume was walking really, really slowly from the black fog in the distance. This was a legit clown costume too, the makeup was crazy. From the slit mouth smile to the blood filled boils, it was a scary costume. The four of us laughed and screamed in reaction, but ultimately walked away. We went to a park that was nearby to just goof around, make a mess with silly string and shaving cream and whatever. We weren't the first however. Strands of silly string littered the playground, as well as shaving cream smudged on the walls of a bathroom building in the park to spell out obscenities. We all hung out on the playground, but Jay pointed out to the dark horizon, where two clowns were walking over to us, one of them the same clown from earlier. I didn't think it was possible, but the second clown was even more disturbing than the first. The first clown now seemed to be welding some kind of long, spear-like object. They both approached us really, really slowly. The funniness of the situation quickly wore off as they got closer and closer. Then they started to charge us. We all ran in different directions. One of the two clowns was chasing me. Out the park and down the street I ran. I didn't know the area too well, but I did know how to get back to Elle's house. I ran all the way there. About halfway there, I lost the clown. I called L and told him I was in his backyard. He was out of breath, but he said he just lost one of the clowns and was on his way over now. I said I'd call Jay, and he said he'd call K. Luckily, Jay picked up on the first ring. He wasn't being chased, so he didn't sound as freaked out as L did. I told him to meet us at L's house. Ten minutes later, all four of us were in Elle's backyard, gathering our thoughts and discussing what just went down. We had a good laugh about it now that it was over as we ate some of the candies that we got. Kay went home, while me, Jay, and Elle hung out in the living room for a while. Lights off, TV on, playing some Xbox One party game. Jay looked out the window and then ducked, and told us to shh and turn off the TV. When we asked why, he said there was a clown out there. I didn't believe him, so I looked out the window. He screamed, don't, but it was too late. The clown standing outside of Elle's house looked right at me through the window. I shut the curtains and told Elle he wasn't lying. His parents weren't home, so going to his dad wasn't an option. Instead, we shut off the TV and went upstairs to Elle's bedroom. 
We looked out the window. The clown wasn't there anymore. Actually, we never saw either of the clowns again. But the next morning, L texted the three of us, saying he found a rubber clown nose on his backyard patio table. He said it was obviously placed there with intent to scare us, and mission accomplished because it worked. Luckily, that clown epidemic didn't last more than a month later. After that, it just became an old story. Oh, man. That clown craze. Oh, man. That was terrible. It was a school night Halloween. My mom and dad took my two twin brothers out trick-or-treating. I didn't have plans, so my parents kind of forced me to answer the door and hand out candies while they were gone. Since we live in a cul-de-sac on a dead-end street, we get next to no trick-or-treaters on Halloween, so every time the doorbell rang, I kind of jumped. I was in the living room watching TV, with the bucket of candies next to me on a small table. Butterfingers, the one and only candy my mom always got on Halloween for some reason. Hmm. The doorbell rang, so I took the orange bucket and brought it to the door and opened it. There was someone in a scream mask and robe holding out a pillow sack. It didn't look like he got a lot of candy for the night. And given that the night was almost over and nobody was really coming to the house, and he was alone, which is always kind of sad, I gave him a bunch of candy. He walked away without saying thanks, which kind of made me feel bad, but it was honestly whatever. I stopped thinking about it as soon as I sat back down on the couch. The movie I was watching ended, so I started surfing the channels. During one of the brief moments of silence as the TV flipped from one channel to the other, I heard a thud and a bump come from downstairs near the back door. To better hear what it could have been, I turned the volume on the TV all the way down and went to the stairway. The back door was wide open. My heart started racing as I started to feel sick inside. I had forgotten to lock it when I went back there. The big question was if what I heard was the sound of the door opening or closing, and if someone was in the house. Naturally, I called down the stairway for my mom and dad, and then my twins' names. The silence from down in the dark den was creepy as hell. I was afraid to go down there. Unfortunately, there's no door to separate the main floor from the den stairway, so sitting in the living room suddenly didn't seem very comfortable. I kept the TV on, but muted. I just felt safer with the extra light it provided. It took a while for some reason, but it finally hit me to call my parents and ask them to come home. My mom said they'd be home within half an hour. I told my mom I was scared that someone was downstairs because I heard something. She assured me that there was nothing and it was just my imagination. <laughs> I hung up the phone and immediately heard the sound of wood foundation cracking under one of the carpeted steps to the den. I froze on the couch. Literally, I couldn't move a muscle, not even a finger. Then there was another crack. As silently as I could, I sat up from the couch into a half-crouched position, tiptoeing to the front door. But as I passed the couch that blocked the view of the den stairway from the living room, I saw something on the stairway. It was a scream mask, leering up from the stairs at me, but in a way where he was obviously not trying to get caught. The angle at which I saw the mask and the dark lighting made the sight so much more disturbing. When he saw me though, he went the other way, back into the darkness of the den. I locked myself in my room upstairs and called my mom again to tell her what happens. They cut their trip short and came home. Only when my parents got home did I feel safe to leave my room. My dad and I checked the whole den, every closet, every room. Luckily there was no one. The moral of the story simply comes down to keeping your doors locked, because apparently this guy just helped himself through our back door. Creepy. My older brother was having a Halloween party. He was a sophomore in college. <laughs> I was actually only in the eighth grade. Our parents weren't home all weekend, so he was taking advantage of the opportunity, I guess. 
He made it abundantly clear he didn't want me in the house during the party, but fortunately I already made plans to go trick-or-treating with two of my friends. We all agreed it would probably be our last year trick-or-treating, so we wanted to make it a good time. We started midday right after school. The prime time where most kids were out, most everyone answers their doors and still had abundant supplies of candies. We each filled two bags of candy by dark, making stops at our houses in between to bring them home, of course. But we weren't done. We weren't satisfied yet. We needed another bag, of course. After eating dinner and resting at my friend's place for a while, we went back out with empty bags and flashlights. You'll find out why in a little bit. It was probably around 9 o'clock now. Getting candy was a bit slower by now since most buckets were empty and not everyone was answering their doors. An hour flew by because we were still having fun, though we didn't get much candy this time. By the time it was like 10.30 or 11 we stopped because it just seemed obnoxious to knock on people's doors this late. Everyone already went home because it was a Tuesday night, a work night and school night. But we already agreed we'd be skipping school the next day. Hmm. We were all in the same homeroom and already knew nothing was going on at school tomorrow. So to us, the night was still young. So we went for a run to what locals called the Ghoul House. It was a house with some history. A couple got divorced after their child somehow died in the house, and then the wife moved out. A couple weeks later, the husband shot himself at the kitchen table. It's been fenced off ever since. Why the house hasn't been sold or torn down by now is beyond me. When we got there, we realized how scary the house was in the dark. It stood taller than the other houses, and it had a black fence surrounding the front yard, with overgrown bushes hugging it. The front gate was pretty easy to hop. The deviance of what we were doing just made it so much more thrilling. We walked around back just to be safe, hoping no neighbors would see us. The back windows were boarded up from the inside, and the back door had a table wedged up against it. Someone clearly tried really hard to keep people out, possibly a neighbor. Through teamwork, we were able to lift the table quietly from off the door and onto the grass. The door was missing a doorknob, and it pushed in relatively easily. We were inside, and it felt weird, it felt uncomfortable and at the same time, exhilarating. All of us had our flashlights, creating a decent amount of light in the otherwise pitch black building. We were in the back living area of the house, some kind of den. The wood floors were all creaky as hell, and everything seemed to have been untouched for years. It didn't seem like anyone ever really broke in there before. That room was clear of anything interesting, so we moved on to the kitchen, an archaic fridge sat in the corner. One of my friends opened it up, and immediately the room filled with a stale, rotten, plasticky type odor. The fridge had some old empty milk and orange juice cartons. That was about it. The whole kitchen smelled foul, so we got out of there quickly. Next was the living room, and this room was just... creepy. Something about it, I, I don't know, it just made you think that any time you turned around, there'd be someone standing in one of the corners. One of my friends pointed his light up and said, Look at that. There was a giant hole in the ceiling, which led right up to a room upstairs. As my other friend and I also shined our lights up there, there was a couple thumps from right above us. We all shut our lights. I got that horrible, painful feeling in my heart area from what I just heard. We all whispered very, very lightly that those were definitely footsteps. One friend whispered we should go up there, see what it was. My other friend and I said absolutely no way and started tiptoeing to the back door. But he was persistent. He didn't follow us. Instead, he went upstairs. He didn't even make a good effort at being quiet about it. We kind of felt like we had to wait for him down in the living room now, so we stayed put. We heard his footsteps upstairs now, crossing the upstairs of the house, until he stopped right above us. My eyes were adjusted to the dark by this point, so even without our flashlights on, I was able to see the figure of my friend, standing above us, looking down through that hole in the ceiling. 
I tried whispering up there loud enough so that he could hear, but apparently he couldn't. I didn't want to get any louder, but suddenly we heard footsteps coming from the stairway in the living room. We both turned on our flashlights and shined them up to the top of the staircase to see our other friend walking down the stairs. The realization set in immediately, and neither of us had the balls to shine our lights up to that hole in the ceiling to see who was actually standing there. I just screamed run, and we all booked it to the back door, out the house, and to one of my friend's house. The friend who went upstairs said he smelled something foul up there, like a rotting carcass, and that he also heard breathing coming from one of the rooms. To this day, we have no idea who was in that house, but it seemed unlikely that it was just another curious wanderer, given how boarded up the house was. To say the least, we don't go there anymore. Hmm. did a good job to scare me <laughs> man I was if you notice I was uh, looking in the camera because I had a I was actually looking in the camera to like look over my over my shoulder <laughs> I was having like I was getting the creeps I was looking over my using the camera to look over my shoulder because I was getting the feeling that something was behind me <laughs> oh man but yeah, that, uh, especially that first story, oh man, the clown craze all the way back then in 2016 or 2017. Oh man, I hated that clown craze, man. Oh man. Just the clowns showing up in them, especially that one clown who showed up in the middle of the road with a rake and he's just like... <sighs> it's like, that's the reason why you no longer see the Ronald McDonald statues in, in McDonald's anymore. Oh my gosh, Creep City! Oh, I never want to see that again. Like, I don't know what it was with the clown, with the clown craze back then, but man, I never want to do that. I never want to see that again. And then that second, uh, that second story with the home intruder. I've never had that happen, but man, I can only imagine how scary that must be to have someone sneak into your house and all of a sudden they creep upstairs from the basement. Or in that case, uh, the den. Man. And then that third one especially, you know, creeping into that abandoned building. Oh. All three stories, man. But especially that... That, uh... That, uh, first story. The clown one, especially. And they say clowns aren't scary. <laughs> man. First seeing the clowns outside the house and then like going upstairs to your room you look out the window and the clown's not there Whew. man but yeah how, how scary did you guys think that that those stories were let me know in the comments because honestly that was a real goose egg on the goosebump meter for me Whew. but yeah this was a great video to react to for halloween and like i said i hope you guys are having a fun and safe Halloween out there. I hope you're having fun trick-or-treating if you still do that. Uh, my version of trick-or-treating, I don't dress up. I usually just wear my Halloween shirt and I go over to Walmart and I just buy all the candy that I want and I get the candy that only I like. So, you know, I get Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, M&Ms, Skittles, Butterfingers, Hershey's, Starburst, uh, Three Musketeers, uh, I'm blanking on all the other candy that I like too. But yeah, only the candy that I like because, you know, when you go trick or treating, uh, you don't usually uh, always get all the candy that you like. You know, sometimes you have to get c candy that you don't like and then, like, you know, you swap it with your uh, siblings. And then, I mean, that's what I did with my sister. But, uh, you know, we would, uh, when we get done trick or treating, we would dump it all out on the living room floor and then we would, uh, you know, select the candy that we would, that each of us would like. But uh, yeah, 
now that I'm an adult, I just go over to Walmart and I just, you know, get the candy that I like. So that's how I trick or treat as an adult. Hmm. But that being said, I am going to be ending this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments below how you think I'm doing, what other videos you want me to react to. Just remember, please keep the comments kind. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about my latest videos. Thanks again so much for watching, you guys. I'll see you all in the next video, and happy Halloween! Roll the outro!